Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be talking about research timelines for USMLE ERAS applications. And to start with, we would like to thank you for all the support you've shown us so far. Now, research is a very big component of your ERAS application. As you're going into residency, and especially now that the step one scores are pass and fail, research is going to carry more weight. And even more so if you're going for a competitive specialty. So you have to be thinking in advance about how you're going to be spending your time research-wise and your productivity regarding research. You can expect to submit your ERAS application as early as the first week of September of the year before you're going to get into residency. And therefore, you would want to make sure that you have enough research by early September. So research has tiers, obviously. The first tier would be abstracts submitted at conferences, whether it's within your institution or the major conferences within your specialty. The next tier would be editorials, letters to the editor and commentaries. And the third tier would be observational studies. So in observational studies here, we're going to include surveys, cohort studies, and case controls. In the next tier, we have reviews. Reviews are classified above clinical trials normally, but when we're thinking about applications for residency, reviews, whether they are systematic or scoping reviews, would be considered to be a little bit above the clinical studies, observational studies, but a little bit below clinical trials and basic science. And therefore, the last tier would be clinical trials and basic sciences. The estimated time frames for this research, uh, at least from my experience, vary a lot. And so we're just going to go through some of the data that we've been able to extract from uh, research that I've already published. You can find the link to my uh, research below the video, and you can also try and fill around extracting that data for submission dates, acceptance dates, and publication dates. It's a really good exercise for you to get used to getting data, aggregating it, analyzing it, and interpreting it. So looking at this diagram that we've put together, uh, we can see first, there's a very big difference between the submission to acceptance dates and publication dates for different types of articles. And uh, we can see here that the median varies a lot of a variation that can go up to two times in the difference, but also pay attention to the interquartile range. So when we talk about interquartile range, we're talking about the difference between the first quartile and in the third quartile. So when you're looking at this rectangular box here, you're looking at the limits of the rectangle. And then the median is that line that we find right there, uh, separating the box into two. So the interquartile range also gives us an idea of the spread, but the median is a really good way of getting quickly a good sense of what we can expect. So what we're seeing here is that on average, 60 to 70 days, we should be expecting an article submitted should have acceptance publication. And therefore, we can start thinking about how we want to plan our pathway to getting acceptance into residency. But we also see here that it can go as high as 120, 130 days. And that is quite some time. And so what can we do to minimize the waiting times? Uh, the first thing we can think about is choose the appropriate journals. If you submit to the wrong journal, it's going to take you more time and you're going to have to wait until the journal uh, gives you a rejection. Although desk rejections suck, they actually help you out because if you get a desk rejection, then you know you can go ahead and submit to another journal. However, if you don't get a desk rejection and the article goes out for review and comes back as a rejection, then you may have lost quite a bit of time. Although I would say on a positive side, if you're getting a really comprehensive and constructive review, that would help you as you go forward because you can implement the recommendations from the reviewer from that journal and then submit them to another journal. So in general, we will want to be submitting to the right journal at the right time and making sure that we are reducing those waiting times as much as possible. So how do we choose the right journal, you may ask? Well, first thing, think about which articles have you been referencing? Which journals were they published in? Because it is more likely that the journals that have published articles that you are referencing are probably going to be interested in your article. On the flip side, it may be that they've published a lot of those types of articles and are no longer interested in that. So you get a good sense if you're following the journals and you've been reading them, getting a good sense of what kinds of articles they've been publishing. So that's one way you can think about it. Another way you can think about it is a lot of the big publishers have websites where you can try and match your abstracts and titles with journals that they have and see how likely it is that they are going to be interested in your articles. But also you want to rely on your um, senior authors. Your senior authors would have a good sense of where your manuscript can land. And uh, that should give you an idea of what your target journal should be. 
Now, like every other application, sometimes we want to go a little bit above expectations and reach for those journals that have maybe a higher impact factor, maybe a higher prestige within the specialty. That is understandable, but you don't want to keep reaching for those journals until you've lost easily six to eight months, even a year, just because you're trying to land into one of the big journals. So you have to know when to let go. I would say on average, try once. If it doesn't work, submit it to a target journal. During your next research, you can try again, uh, but just keep the ball rolling. Just keep it moving so that you can meet your targets in time. The other thing is you want to be on the lookout for uh, journal special issues. These are a really great way for you to get your articles in there. So if there's a special issue, you can easily get multiple articles submitted and accepted, uh, usually because when there's a special issue, there's a lot of interest declared by the journal and it will be easier for you to get it published. So go onto the journal websites and check out if they have special issues or if they have a journal uh, specifically for special issues, get a good sense of what the timelines are and start working towards them. Also, be on the lookout for those conferences that warrant full manuscript submissions after abstract presentation. There are a few of them out there. So usually what happens is you submit an abstract, it gets uh, accepted, you go and present it at a conference, and perhaps you get invited to submit a full manuscript. So always ask about these opportunities, and if they exist, do not hesitate to seize them, because chances are if your abstract was accepted and you were invited to submit a full manuscript, it wouldn't get rejected. You may get a few rounds of revision, but you're probably going to get it published. So you want to leverage that as well. And then the next thing is we want to make sure we're reading articles in our rich journals and that we are interacting with these articles. So we want to submit letters to the editor in response to these articles, giving very nuanced critiques and very well-researched positions in association, in collaboration with senior attendings. So you want to have that mentor of yours, that sponsor of yours working with you, submit the initial draft to them and then see what they have to say about that. Then another strategy I would recommend is make sure you tighten your methodology and academic writing. You want to make sure that is impeccable. So do all the work beforehand. Make sure your academic writing is really good. Make sure you have great illustrations and tables that make it easy for the reviewers. Every time you make the work easy for the reviewers, you're going to get reviews coming back quickly and that will shorten the time frames as well. Also, you want to respond to the reviewers promptly and clearly. What do I mean by this? Use a point by point response system and reference exactly where the changes are made. So tell them, as you may see on page three, line 23, I've made so so and so change and that will make it so much easier for them. Above all, be polite. Remember the reviewers are doing this for free. Um, they're taking out of their very busy time to help improve the quality of research within the journal, within the field. So be very polite, even if it feels like sometimes it's been a personal attack towards you, but be polite. In the same vein, when you're submitting your article, if a journal asks you to propose a few reviewers, do not hesitate to propose a few reviewers. Make sure that you know people within the space that are interested in that topic that will be willing to take some time to, to look at it. Obviously, you don't want to go for those people that you know because there'll be a clear conflict of interest. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So make sure you know who within the space is interested in this and will be willing to review your article. Another recommendation we have here is work on multiple projects at different levels of the research cycle. So what we mean here is you may have one project that's still at the ideation phase, another project that is at the statistical analysis or data collection, one that's in the writing, another one that's within the review. That helps you keep the ball rolling. You don't have to wait for one project to be over before you start another one. Related to this, the final piece of advice is collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. The more you're collaborating, the more likely you'll be able to have all these different projects going on. It also means that you wouldn't have the same level of um, responsibility in different projects. In some of them, you'll be first author, second author, maybe middle author. That's all fine. Just make sure that you're collaborating. Uh, you're going to be learning from your colleagues and you're going to get more opportunities to get your research out there and get more research under your belt. So ultimately, what we mean here is if you are planning, for example, to get 10 to 15 publications out there, actual articles, then you want to start quite early. If you've enjoyed all that we shared so far, please do not hesitate to like, comment and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when the next videos are out.